Researchers for, from Stanford University looked into a possible cancer vaccine and through their clinical trials on mice found that the vaccine is incredibly effective and they're planning on testing the vaccine on humans very soon. Now the treatment stimulates the body's immune system to attack cancer cells in studies in mice with various cancers including lymphoma, breast cancer and colon cancer. The treatment eliminated cancer tumors in 87 out of 90 mice, even when the tumors had spread to other parts of the body. Now the word vaccine is being used by the researchers here, but this treatment works differently from traditional vaccines. Now traditionally vaccines prevent diseases. In this case, the cancer already exists. However, the treatment is injected into the tumor and it strengthens the immune system to help the body fight the cancer. And not only that tumor, but all other tumors that have spread to the rest of that individual's body. So researchers from Stanford will test the therapy in about 35 people with lymphoma by the end of the year. So let's get into the nitty gritty of the science and how this treatment works. The treatment contains a combination of two agents that stimulate T cells, a type of immune cell to attack cancer. Normally the body's T cells recognize cancer cells as abnormal and will infiltrate and attack them. But as a tumor grows, it suppresses the activity of the T cells so that these cells can no longer keep the cancer at bay. But this treatment would essentially empower those T cells to keep fighting. Researchers inject the vaccine directly into the tumor. The two agents in the treatment work synergistically in attacking the T cells. Because these T cells were already inside the tumors, they have essentially been pre-screened by the body to recognize cancer specific proteins. And so again, it has been rather successful in these trials involving mice. But there have been other trials using other treatments that have been successful with mice, but it didn't transfer to humans. So hopefully this will be successful in trials involving humans, but we'll see. It's kind of early, but it is still, it's fine to be optimistic. It's yeah. always good to be optimistic about this. What I think is interesting is that a vaccine I usually think of as preventative, and this is a little bit more reactionary, which yeah. is fine, but it's just interesting to see how we're developing the technology and um, the medicinal science to deal with cancer. And it's probably not gonna be the way that I, I would have expected. I sort of thought that within my lifetime, we would maybe have some sort of a vaccine or something. And perhaps uh, it, if this goes through, then you would sort of have to contract cancer first and then you can deal with it. So we'll, we'll see how this rolls out. There's so many different kinds of cancers and it's right. happening yeah. on a cellular level and cells begin to misfire. And so it involves a lot of uh, different biological systems. So I think that's one of the reasons it's hard to come up with uh, you know the cure for cancer cancer in any of our lifetime. I've said it before, I don't approve of the use of animals in any of these experiments. It's an awful thing, these animals suffer and they're tortured and then they're destroyed, which means killed at the end of this. And then to what Anna says, it's not an accurate predictor of what will happen with people. The only way you can actually do this is with double blind studies with human beings, because in overwhelming cases, it's not a predictor, it doesn't, so the indication, I, again, I don't mean to rain on the parade, it, this might be a great drug, but the only way we'll know is the next step, as Anna says, when they do the double blind study in humans with tumors. So uh, it, it hopefully is good news, and as you say, might be the beginning of a real process of treating cancer. Yeah. We certainly come up with different ways to treat it in our lifetime, yeah. right? Uh, that's it's, the, it's totally different. Uh, you know, my uh, my fiance's grandmother and my fiance's mother uh, both had breast cancer, mm -hmm. and um, it's interesting. So that's obviously something in their in their gene pool. And the treatments that they went through just generationally have improved vastly. And so there there's a lot to be encouraged about, um, but. Obviously, we're still a ways away. So I, I wanted to jump in on what Mark was saying because uh, there was a story recently that uh, unfortunately we didn't get to on the show regarding how um, members of the right, uh, right wing lawmakers were pushing for um, legislation that would allow people with cancer and other illnesses to opt in to treatments that haven't been uh, approved by the FDA yet. So they would be you know, trial type situations. And I don't know why it is, but 
members of the left aren't necessarily in favor of that. And I think part of the reason why these clinical trials begin with mice is because of some of those regulatory restrictions. I, I firmly believe that as humans, we should have complete say over our own bodies and what we do to our own bodies as long as we're not harming anyone else. And if someone has a terminal illness or something as serious as cancer, I think he or she should have the ability to make a decision as to whether or not they're involved in, in certain trials or certain treatments that haven't been approved by the FDA yet. Mm -hmm. Now with that said, there has already been considerable advancements in cancer treatments in other countries, something that isn't talked about a lot here in the United States, let's keep it real. <laughs> in fact, there has been some development in treating lung cancer in Cuba. And there have been numerous reports about this, but I just wanted to show you this quick video to give you a little more insight into this treatment. Take a look. Simovax EGF is a Cuban developed drug aimed at preventing the recurrence of the disease. Gomez is now back at work and once a month she returns to the hospital for a series of intramuscular injections. I feel good, I have even gained some weight. I've been using the vaccine for two years and four months now and so far I feel really good. Patients still have to complete a course of chemo or radiotherapy before moving on to the vaccine. There are other lung cancer fighting drugs which work by attacking the cancer cells. What's different about the vaccine is that it helps the body generate its own immune system in a way that starves the cancer and stops it from growing. It has revolutionized lung cancer treatment in our country. It's a new therapeutic weapon for treating the disease. Patients are responding well and surviving for longer than those not being treated with it. So, um, you know, there again has been some advancements in Cuba and for all of the fear mongering that you hear in the United States regarding Cuba and how Cubans are living, they're still doing an incredible job when it comes to preventative health care. And apparently they've shown some improvement when it comes to treating diseases such as cancer as well. So I can't help but be struck that as we talk about all these different cancer cures and there are breakthroughs and there are great signs that never talked about is the cause of cancer. We don't talk right. enough, actually we do talk a bit about it on TYT, mm -hmm. but these pollutants that we refer to, particularly in hour one, the toxification of the air, the water, the land, and of course the cancer rates are growing and the treatments have to grow with them. But if, if we could have a little more conversation in this country about the causes of the cancer, instead of, hey, different ways to treat the tumor, hey, you know, my aunt just got cancer, right, because we're, we're swimming, we're bathing in these carcinogens every day. And it's just a shame that there isn't more talk about uh, those things in our environment that are producing these conditions. Absolutely. And also treatments in other countries. I think that's really important to point out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that one thing that the US could certainly improve upon is learning from what other countries are doing right. And oftentimes that has to do with policy, right? I mean, we very rarely look at things like health policy, healthcare policy in other yeah. countries and learn from what they're doing right. In fact, we'll look at countries that are doing things right and automatically uh, smear it as our politicians do with universal health care in, in places like Canada, for instance. Um, and it's because of the corporate interests that don't want us to have a better system in place. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, what we saw in Cuba with that uh, treatment for lung cancer is kind of similar to what researchers are now looking into here in the United States. Ways to uh, strengthen and improve uh, the human immune system so it can kind of fight off that cancer and keep uh, people living longer lives. You just watched the video by the Young Turks, home of the revolution. If you'd like to get a lot more than that, get the full show by becoming a member, tytnetwork.com slash join.